Well, hello, hello, General Hospital Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Monday, August the 12th, 2024. Monday, August the 12th. Eh, not a lot happening today. Uh, we have Charisma in the house. Charisma. And his name is Jack Brennan. He orders like this really rare bottle of wine and Carly's, uh, say maitre d' or whatever she is, hostess slash maitre d' says that there's a customer that insists on this bottle of wine that they don't have. But she felt this bottle that she was showing Carly is comparable. It's like one of their most expensive bottles there. She goes, really? Carly says, you know what? I've had a hectic day with... Donna in the emergency room. I I just don't have the bandwidth for customer rudeness, nonsense. Uh, I'll handle this myself. She goes up there, knocks on the door, and who opens it up but none other than Jack Brennan himself. And he's looking at her, well, well. Personalized attention from Fiona. <laughs> and Carly looks at him like, what you doing here? She goes, what are you doing in my hotel? And he says, um, order in some wine. And she goes, we didn't have the bottle that you wanted. So we picked out the next best thing. He goes, oh, this is a good substitute. Excellent. Come and sample it with me. She goes, I'm working. I'm very busy. He says, now, now. So she's she's walking in, smugly, smirking as she goes by. She did everything but flip her hair. Carly never hair flips, right? But she does give that little flirty half grin on her face. And she goes, well, you're right. Since it is this expensive, I can sample it to make sure it's good. So she walks in, she goes, that's a lot of food for one. And he goes, well, you might as well sit and have a bite to eat while you sample in your wine. She says, I'm not going to be here long enough to eat. I'm just here long enough to sample the wine. So she reaches to pick it up and Jack takes that bottle of wine and he puts it next to the plate across from where they're standing. And then he walks behind the chair and says, come on, sit down, because you got to let it breathe first anyway. And she's like, you're not good. Okay, right? So she sits down and she goes, how are you here and not in prison? And he goes, well, that's an inter." As he's starting to say interesting, there's a bang on the door. Now, Anna was supposed to be meeting Felicia at the Metrocourt dining room. As Felicia comes in, she was a little late. Anna got a text and she's like, she stands up. She goes, what? And Felicia, she goes, hi, Felicia. Look, I ordered you a glass of wine because Anna's wine was, I ordered you a glass of wine. I got something I got to take care of real quick. I'll be right back. And Felicia's like, oh, oh okay. Right. So Anna's Brennan opens the door and Anna says, what the heck are you up to? And he looks at her and she walks right past him. And she looks at Carly. She goes, sorry to interrupt whatever this is. Right. And Carly says, uh, this is me having a bite with one of my valued customers, you know, like, psh, right. And so Anna says, well, you know what? You might want to leave for this conversation. And Carly says, well, you know what? I think I'll stay <laughs> to hear it. Right. And Brennan closes the door and Anna's like, suit yourself. And then she asked Brennan, how, and why did you get assigned to Port Charles permanently? 
And Carly is looking like, because when she was sitting down talking to him, she says, how long are you going to be in town for? Are you here for business? He goes, like poor Charles, I might be here permanently, right? He kind of alluded to that. And so Carly looked at him and she looked at Anna and he goes, well, with all the continuous crime in Port Charles, the WSB decided they were going to have a permanent field office here. And Anna says, and you got the job as station chief? And he smiled at her and he goes, got to do my part. And Carly says, so wait a minute. Wait a minute. So you are one of the heads of the WSB again, and now you're permanently stationed here in Port Charles? And he goes, yeah. And Cardi says, you know what, Anna, you're right. I don't want to be here for this conversation. So she walks out and she leaves because now she knows, okay, that means none other than Sonny is in the WSB's crosshairs, right? And so when he shuts the door, he goes, now you see what you did. You ruined a perfectly good evening. And Anna says, I want some answers now. And he goes, there's no answers to tell you. I am now over the field office here in Port Charles. So you and I will be working closely together. Anna says, look, I know the WSB had absolutely no interest in a field office in Port Charles. That is all you, Brennan. You pushed for that, as well as pushed and pushed for a number of other things to happen, other players to be moved around. She's alluding to Valentina and Carly, but really Carly, because she's the one that moved Valentina around. And he's just looking at her smugly. And she says, but I want to know there, there, there's an end game here. What is it? I'm thinking as if he's going to tell you, Anna, you might as well shut up and leave. Right. And so Brennan is just looking at her like, Psh. talk to the hand, Anna, talk to the hand. So now we have TJ. He and Jordan are picking out little funeral plots. They're looking at, you know, funeral plots for their little his little girl. And they come across this one spot that they feel is perfect. And um, Jordan says, I don't mean to overstep TJ, but where is Molly? Shouldn't she be here with you doing this? He goes, I have texted Molly several times. I have called her a number of times. She doesn't return any calls. She doesn't return any texts. He goes, as a matter of fact, I can't even tell you where Molly is. She, He's like, I, without you, mom, thank you so much for doing this with me because I, I just couldn't do it alone. She goes, no, but no, honey, no, baby. That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help. And then Molly comes ru running up. Sorry, I'm late. Sorry, I'm late. And he just looks at her. She goes, but I didn't know you were going to do this today. He said, had you responded to any of my text messages, had you even listened to my voicemail messages, you would have known I was doing this today. Well, I'm sorry. I got really busy with work and, you know, I should have checked my phone more than I did, but I'm sorry. It's that flip it. Well, whatever. This can't be that important. So George, um, Jordan says, well, I'm going to leave you two alone. She leaves. And TJ lets her know, you know, Molly, bottom line, we are going through this together and I'm the only one that's moving things forward. And this is hard for me. She goes, it's hard for me too. He goes, but we should be leaning on each other. I'm all alone in this. And Molly's like, I'm just so angry. I'm just so angry. He goes, well, I'm angry too, Molly, but we have to move forward. There are some things we have to do. We have to name our baby. We have to. We need to decide on the burial plot. And we need to plan the service. 
these are some things that I, I, I don't want to do alone. And she goes, well, I'm, I'm here now. I'm here now. You're not alone. You're not alone. So she puts her back, you know, to his front looking at the space. And she goes, and you're right. This is a perfect spot. But she was saying that she's going to make Ava, pay. she's going to make sure Ava pays. And he goes, while you're doing that, while you're going to try to make sure Ava pays, I'm still alone. And that's when she says, well, I'm with you. And now in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, so is this when they're going to bring her father to town? Because Molly cannot be the DA, uh, ADA, prosecuting Ava. There's a conflict of interest. And really, honestly, in reality, even her father doing it, that was his grandchild. That's a conflict of interest too. So I don't know to what degree Rick, oh, wait, I think I figured it out, everybody. Brennan has a field office in Port Charles. I will bet you any amount of money. Rick is one of the WSB attorneys on retainer. And he's going to be there to try to get information on his brother, even though he's an attorney, right? But he's going to be doing some detective work, right? That's going to be interesting. Because quite frankly, I always thought Rick had something to do with Pikeman. They just never uh, uh, dotted that I and crossed that T, right? So now we have, oh, the reason why Blaze had not been by Christina's bedside is they would oh, they were only letting family visit. And she was so upset that Brooklyn was there that, you know, I cannot see her. She, I need to be by her side. She needs to know I'm there. And so I'm thinking, well, stand by her door. It's got shutters, blinds. Somebody to open it up and you can wave at her, right? Hey, honey, I can't come in. They won't let me see you. Okay, but I'm here, right? So um, Brooklyn is so excited. There's this famous artist that wants her to open for him overseas because his opening act pulled out. This would be a complete reboot of Blaze's career. This would just send her, you know, actually further than she was. But she told, I, told Brooklyn, I can't leave Christina. Cancel it. I can't do it. Christina needs me to help her recuperate through this. And Brooklyn is like, Blaze, listen, Christina has a lot of family. She has a lot of help. But, I, and I understand you wanting to be here. I really, really do. But your career needs recouping and attention. This is a really big thing and it'll never come back around to you. Right? This is going to make your name known internationally. So Blaze, she looked like she didn't give an answer, but then Natalia comes in all excited and happy, saying, look, I've already took the liberty of packing Allie's, cl um, Allie's clothes. They're in my car. <laughs> she ready to kick dropper or drop kicker on that plane, right? And so Brooklyn told her, she said no. She says she is not going to go out of town. She wants to stay with to take care of Christina. So Blaze goes to see Christina and she's trying to offer her any, anything to comfort her. Is there anything I could do? Can I, are you, do you need more meds? Are you comfortable? Are you in pain? And Christina's like, no. And, and quite frankly, after talking to her for a few minutes, she says, I'm really tired. And I'm really not up for a visitor. And so Blaze just looks at, her. she goes, you know what? Perhaps, um, you know, maybe you need something from home. She goes, I just need to rest. So Blaze leave, and then you get another knock, knock, knock. It's Natalia. I just want to see how you are. And I thought Blaze had to stand on her head to see Christina. How is Natalia just knocking, knocking? Hey, how you doing? So sorry this happened to you. She goes, you just missed Allie. She goes, oh, okay. Oh, so then she told you, uh, no, she goes, I don't know where she's at. 
or where she went. And she goes, well, I could tell you where she didn't go. She's not on her way to the airport. And Christina says, what? She goes, oh, she didn't tell you? The old, she didn't tell you, right? And so Christina's like, tell me what? And then she, um, uh, Natalia told her what, you know, this big opportunity. And she's tearing up in her eyes, Christina, I need your help. I need you to let her go. I need you to. So Allison leaves, uh, Blaze comes back. She went to Christina's apartment, got one of her favorite blank blankets that she would throw across her legs. And she goes, you know, this even smells like your place. I figured you'd want it because I was noticed it was a little cold when I was in here earlier. And Christina says, that's not what I, I want from you. I want for you to go on tour. And Allison looked at her and said, who told you about that? And Christina said, after you left, I got a visit from your mother. And for once, your mother and I agree with each other. And Allison was just looking at Christina. Right. And we'll get back, you know, tomorrow I could tell where they're going to pick up on that. So before Allison was there, Willow was speaking to Christina because remember, Michael asked Willow to talk to Christina to just kind of comfort her and share, you know, because they have they both in common. Willow lost her Jonah, even though she had given Jonah up and thought another baby was her son. But still, once she did find out the loss is a loss. Right. So she's talking to Christina and Christina's IV, it was hurting her. And, and Willow said, oh, that's because it's not in properly. I can call a nurse and they can adjust it. And then Willow looked at her. She goes, you know what? I am right here. I can easily do this. So she got some gloves and she fixed it. And Christina was like, thank you so much. That feels so much better. Right. And so they were just talking about nurses and, you know, how they they help people. And that's a calling you know, and Christina said, I really appreciate nurses. Okay. But before Willow went into Christina's room, she's walking around the corner. Nope. She's not walking around the corner after she came out of Christina's room. She's walking around the corner to, towards the nurse's station. Drew's getting off the elevator. And she's like, Drew, what are you doing here? It's a public hospital chick. He didn't know where you were going when you got off the elevator. Well, I guess he really did, right? Because Nina said Michael was here, but he wanted to go to the hospital to visit Christina. He could reasonably deduct where Willow would be, right? So anyway, um, he says Monica was having, a, there was an issue with Monica's medication it's a mix-up and she asked me to come pick up the, you know the proper medication and so she goes oh well that's nice of you and elizabeth walked up and she he goes thanks again elizabeth for taking care of this medication issue for monica she goes time anytime drew so drew says you know what uh ladies i'm gonna go i'm gonna get this to monica right now so willow talks to elizabeth she ends up telling her she wants to come back to nursing because after do, fixing one IV for Christina, she realizes how much she misses it. And that is really her true calling. The foundation was fine, but it's going to now start to require a lot of out of, out of town travel. And out of town travel is just not in her what she wants to do. You know, and Elizabeth says, well, you did wonderful work because the transplant uh, donor database is way up. So, you you know, you've done a phenomenal job. Are you sure, Willow? Because you left for a reason. You wanted to spend more time with your children. She says, yes, and I, I, I do. She says, however, the work at the foundation is not as rewarding as helping patients. You know, making sure they feel better. 
So I'm thinking, okay, you sounds good. Sounds good. So she goes, you know, of course, I got to talk it over with Drew and Michael, but it'll be okay. And so Elizabeth is like, well, then in that case, welcome back. And I thought, did they just take Willow away from being a nurse just so they could put her and Drew together for this kiss? What a waste of time. What a waste, honestly. Her kids have been happier now that she's a rat. Willow, Willow's a hot mess, hot mess. So now we have Maxie's talking to Nina. And Nina is telling her her great plan on, you know, she's going to put herself between Willow and Drew because Willow's got that savior complex going on. Drew saved her life. So she's just in awe of him, worshiping him. She says, and then you've got Drew on the other hand, like any man, she says, loves when he, when he looks into Willow's eyes, looking back at him, he sees how much she worships him, how much she's on this pedestal, puts him on this pedestal and is stroking his ego. So she says, I'm going to put myself in the middle of that. And Maxie says, Nina, I can't tell you how many ways that's going to go wrong. And Nina's like, she don't see how. Bottom line, she and Drew do have a physical relationship and she plans on making sure Drew is having way too much fun that he won't even notice Willow at all. So Maxie says, Nina, don't fall in love with Drew. See, while you're doing this, <clears throat> your feelings can get all entangled. And Nina's like, no, I won't. I'm doing this for Willow. I'm doing this for my daughter. And Maxie says, oh, you're doing this for Willow, right? So then there's a knock on the door. Drew's arrived and Maxie's getting ready to go. She goes, well, that, and Nina opens the door and he goes, Maxie, I didn't know you were here. She goes, hey, man, I'm on my way out. And by the way, before I let this go, is it Kristen, Kristen? She's looking so good now. She's dressing more stylish. I'm liking the look. The hair is that really pretty blonde, gorgeous makeup. Good job. Really good job. I'm happy seeing Maxie uh, or Kirsten feeling much better because it's showing. It really is showing. Um. So anyway, she leaves and Drew comes in and... um. Nina has some wine poured and they're going over. She recircled some districts and they go over a plan and they have a meeting and she bends over to pour some wine and all the girls are all nice. And she got her hand pushing the girls up in front of him. And he's looking at her like way down here. Now, my, mind you, her eyes are up here, but Drew's looking at her. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, looking good, Nina. Right? And so Nina says, Oh, Drew. And he goes, What what's the matter? She goes, That shirt is your color. Your eyes, it really brings out your eyes. And he goes, Why, well, thank you. She goes, You need to wear that shirt as often as you can on the campaign trail. So she picks up the wine and they have a sip and she's flirty, flirty. Next thing you know, next thing you know, right? They're kissing, put the wine glasses down and she leaning back on the couch and he, he's, you know, or he leans her back on the couch, kissing. At least it's not on the floor. At least it's not on the floor. So they're getting ready to do the do. Uh, she's... Nina's getting ready to make sure Drew has a lot of fun right now, right? <laughs> and so is she. So that is it, everyone. That is it for today. Jack Brennan, he's going to be a very interesting character. I like him. I've always liked him so much better than John Cates. So we're we're going to see, but she, he, he's Carly's not going to be with him long because his whole thing is going to be take down Sonny. It really is. First, she's going to get rid of John Cates. And they're going to think Sonny did it. But it's not going to be Sonny. 
Okay, let's go to comment corner, comment corner. Let me put on my <clears throat> stopwatch. I'm going to start from the bottom to the top right now. And Cassie says, hello, DLR, Daily Recap Lady. Have a blessed weekend. Uh, Sandy says, it's the old stuck in the elevator trick. Willow standing there drooling at Drew. I've had enough of Christina. Sandy also says, thank you. Thank you. There is such a big difference between, oh, the old Jagger, OG Jagger, and the new one, which is why I call him Malibu Kid. You sure do call him Malibu Kid. There is no way I could ever call him Jagger. Me either. Um, the big mistake they made was writing him so obnoxious and bullying Jason um, on his return. Don't mess with Jason. And then Wendy says the elevator scene, Willow, is so scared because she wants him so bad. She's more like Nina than she thinks. He's playing her like a symphony. If Nina is too lame to see what's going on, oh, well, poor Michael, poor Michael. Christina should not have seen those pics, I know. She is not well enough. She's going to end up killing or hurting someone. Now she wants uh, Sonny's gangster. P. Merle says, just like the rest of the hypocrites of Pork Charles, Sonny is a thug until they need some dirt done. And then Richard says, amen to P. Merle. And Anita says to P. Merle, very true. That is so true. And then Jane says, I have nothing against him. Personally, I think he's not a battery viewer, but uh, I don't know what that means, Jane. Uh, I'm just glad I don't see, I didn't see it today, but to be honest, I'm glad I missed it. Send it. I mean, really boring. Okay. I'd rather watch the Avengers Endgame. By the way, Jane, I did like the movie Avengers Endgame. Um, and then Jane says, I'm sorry. Reese Bernard, a.k.a. Sonny. Jane, you mean Maurice Bernard, a.k.a. Sonny. Uh, but in every soap opera I've seen, they always get off. Uh, they always get out of jail and the person who should pay uh, uh, for a sad crime gets out. Um, and then there's a lot of, there's a riot. And then someone tries to kill the same person who has been crying or, or they think did said crying. Okay. Now let's go to Sabrina. Sabrina says, hi, Daily Recap Lady. I find it strange no one has asked Christina what happened. Me too. I was going to say that and I forgot. No one asked Christina for her side of the story. Not even the cops. Come on now. She is the victim. Her statement should have definitely been taken. Not Alexis, Sonny, or Michael. When does she give a statement? It's clear she's going to lie and say Ava pushed her. Christina's going to want to give the baby the last name of Corinthos. Um, this is going to set off a firestorm. Just my thoughts. I think you're right. I really do. And at this point, I think Christina's got, legally she can pick the baby's name. P. Merle says, no one is acknowledging Christina's constant referral to her baby being gone either. That will also come, that will also cause a few explosions when they plan uh, the burial. And then Sabrina says yes to P. Merle. And then we have Denzel. Denzel says on Friday's episode was boring. Uh, got me falling asleep mostly. If Willow is so uncomfortable with creepy <laughs> long neck Drew, she shouldn't have, she should have told Michael that her, a creepy long neck Drew. Um, they had kissed already, but we already know if Willow told Michael, he would go off. Um, we already know how Michael is when he keeps secret stuff uh, from him or when you keep secret stuff from him. The secrets, the scenes between Michael and Nina was awkward and weird. I, mean, I thought so too. Um, 
I got to see, I got a, a feeling once Michael hears that Willow and Drew kissed, um, he's going to go off. Michael and Nina will hook up. Now, I don't see that. Um, I have a night stand. Wait, and have night stand, stand sex. No. <laughs> Which I hope not. Nah, I don't see her, her sleeping with Michael. That She would know that that really would. Nina, I mean, Willow would never speak to her again. Mark says, uh, it's only TV fiction, but these writers are sick-minded uncle sleeping with his nephew's wife is wicked and just nasty but someone told me that the world we live in but somebody told me that's the world we live in and i said that's the people uh that whole drew and willow fling will not end well for nobody that's true but i'm hoping it doesn't really really but as long as she acts stupid she she's a full meal waiting to be eaten well now they're trying to go back to gh we shall see what's happening p Merle says i'm thinking nina hopes she can make drew forget about willow at dinner lol and then angie says to p Merle, nina will learn there's a difference between having casual sex and being in love or having feelings of the heart uh there will be a whole lot of passion and burning desire between uh, Drew and Willow if they ever get together. That's I, I just hate that whole scenario. And then Lucy says, it's getting hot in here, LOL. I enjoyed GH's Friday episode, your recap and comment corner. Uh, Lady, Lady Sheila say, what? Lucy? What are you doing saying my actual name? You know better than that. Safe travels. <laughs> you trying to out me, girl. And then last comment, P. Merle says, OMG, I knew we had not heard the last of Heather. That ambulance chasing Scott has no shame. There is no making amends for taking someone's lives. Have we forgotten she is already... Uh, she was already in prison when she broke out, I know, to be the hook killer. She sure was. And then Sabrina says the actors are not concentrating on her past crimes. Not the actors, the writers. Uh, just the hook killings. That's the writers are not concentrating. In my opinion, this disgusting storyline is only going to contribute to their already plummeting ratings. Just my thoughts. And Anita says to Sabrina, I agree. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody, for your great comments on Comment Corner. I only scratched the surface in these comments. Everybody, please go to Comment Corner and read each other's comment comments. And please subscribe, subscribe to this YouTube channel. We're on a race to 4,000. So let's see if we can get to 4,000 by the end of this year. That would be phenomenal. So have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow for another daily recap.